You could be forgiven for thinking you were in the snowfields today at Hawks Nest and Tea Gardens. There was a blanket of white stuff, but at closer inspection it became evident that it wasn't snow. The freak storm began at about a quarter to twelve and lasted twenty minutes. Residents say there's never been a storm of this velocity here before, and most people didn't know what it hit them. At the Lone Pine Caravan Park and Tea Gardens, the storm damage was extensive. Annexes were ripped and destroyed and many spent the afternoon cleaning up the mill. Cars were dented and there were reports of house windows being broken. Thankfully for most, the hail was simply a nuisance that had to be cleaned away. Have you ever seen anything like this here before? No, we've done them all our life. Never seen anything like this. This is a leisure time complex aimed at the dreams of children of all ages, offering the chance to sit behind the wheel of a single-seater racing car, which at least looks pretty much like the real thing. Some ago, Speedway promoter Peter Gabriel and partner John Conaghan have invested just over $1 million in the sophisticated twin track racing yeah. complex, which will be open today by Port Stephen Fire President Paul Tate. From tomorrow, it will be open seven days a week from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. That's the drive depending entirely on the size of your wallet. There are two tracks, one with mini Can-Am cars for drivers nine years and over, and the Grand Prix cars, which have a minimum of 14 years, drive each year with track license, and cost $2 a lap. The race is against the clock. The track is a fixture of a highly sophisticated computerised timing system accurate to one hundredth of a second. The car by 500 feet in the mini cars have just one gear, and the new one is flat, so they're easy to drive. Finding the fast way around is almost as challenging as the real thing. Probably the thing is so tight, too, and it's a bit tricky to the anything line with a fraction too much tight.
Gallows Building Cattle Response to cause havoc amongst local yachtsmen last summer. During this incident in April, a dozen yachts returning from an ocean race became stuck on a sandbar known as the Dropover. At the moment, clearance over the bar is no more than one and a half feet at high tide. Some yachts have been tilted on their side to fly over the bar, but many larger yachts are now landlocked. It's two years since the channel was last dressed. And that was done only because the electricity commission needed to float a generator into the lake for one of the power stations. Now Mr. Brereton has announced this channel will be dredged again at a cost of $200,000. According to the Rear Admiral of the Lake Macquarie Yacht Club, John Moore, local yachtsmen believe the dredging is overdue, but are extremely happy that it will finally happen. Well, we're very delighted to hear Mr. Brereton's uh, pledge. Uh, I think it'll be great for Lake Macquarie, particularly with tourism, uh, other yachting clubs and uh, motorboating clubs will be able to frequent the lake uh, much easier than what it's been. Now you've needed this dredging for some time, what sort of problems have you encountered with that? Well, uh, at one and a half metres of water doesn't allow any boat of reasonable size to come into the lake without a massive operation of dragging them through the sand and pulling their mast over the top. Now, this creates a lot of stress on keels of yachts and on the rigging and doesn't do the boats any good either. Tenders for the project will not be called until early in the new year. By the time the work is finished, the summer will be over and many local yachts will once again spend the season locked in the lake. for many years. During two breathless weeks, there were more than 100 people in the Allen says that of those 100 events, about two thirds successfully attracted the crowd. But despite that qualified success, Mr. Allen believes there was widespread public excitement about Matara for the first time in several years. According to Mr. Allen, it is accessible only to the success of Matara's potential. Johnny, after two weeks of the festival, how do you feel it's gone? Was it a success? I think so. I'd rather other people said that than, <laughs> than me. But yes, I think it has. I mean, certainly the, the, um, all of the festival groups have reported back that they've had um, a very good response, more so than in recent years, and are very happy with it. And whilst there are some things that we would have done differently, on the whole, uh, I think the organising group is fairly happy with it. What are some of the things you would have done differently? Yes, Matara, I think only some, some things hit the mark. Others people patently didn't want, so we should probably um, think differently in future. And I think the, some, of the, some of the events were just a bit soon. I think particularly the big outdoor events, we had still quite a lot to learn in terms of how to really get them up there and running. But I think some of those things were beginnings this year, and uh, we always were prepared to learn lessons, and I think we've learned some lessons. Mm -hmm. As Matara ends, Carnivali 85 begins. The week-long statewide multicultural festival began in Newcastle today with an exhibition of Serbian artefacts at the Serbian Church Hall in Gosford Road, Broadmeadow. The exhibition has been gathered from the local Serbian community. Just about every item is handmade, some with exquisite detailing. Among the highlights is a traditional musical instrument called a disco and a 200-year-old pocket watch. The exhibition is open to the public each day until Saturday.
these people are really concerned about, particularly people in colleges of advanced education and universities. So we felt that our students would be very much interested in combining the two events. Also, participation in two, so two of the key themes of international youth this year. So it made sense for us to combine the two. Julian is one of the founding members of PANDA, who is in nuclear disarmament and was a Senate candidate in the last federal election. She said that from her experiences with the administration at Pine Gap and Green and Common in England, she was convinced that she was a big and must be taken first. To spread the message of peace, organisers have handed out 1,000 of these clay buttons embossed with a dove. The idea is that we should all press the peace button rather than the nuclear button. Competed for the chance to represent the Hunter Valley and Central Coast region in the state final next month. Girls from as far north as Cali, Western Musselbrook and Marywar and south to Gosford modelled evening wear before an appreciative crowd at the presentation ball. Money raised by the girls in the quest goes to the Spastic Centre of New South Wales. And although beauty is certainly a criteria, organisers insist it's only one of many qualities that go to make a winner. The girl selected to represent the region is Sally Ann Lyon of Sahaga. She was presented with her sash by chairman of the judging panel, Mike Harfield. The charity queen is Tracy Skinner of Wingham. The main points of Mr Keating's tax reform package are a new capital gains tax and new tax on fringe benefits. And to make it easy to swallow, income tax cuts worth $4,500 million a year when they take effect fully. In Newcastle last night, tax consultant Bruce Williams described the package as fair. I'm not a political animal, but I think it's a, a fair budget. I think it's aimed at those people who are getting perks, and the vast majority of taxpayers are, and uh, I think it's probably iniquitous that certain taxpayers have, in effect, a tax-free form of income. And on the one hand, they're losing those tax-free perks, and at the same time, well, the amount of tax that they'll pay, in other words, the marginal rate of tax will be reduced to compensate. I think we might see uh, capital gains tax on private investment won't be seen for several years. The new tax on fringe benefits starting next July will be paid by employers and will apply at the company tax rate. Benefits to be covered include company cars, low interest loans, accommodation, and any expenses paid on behalf of an employee. The government has taken a fairly lenient view. The maximum amount of tax that can be paid is 11% of the cost of the car, which for a $15,000 kilometre is about $1,600, is included as income. But that's open to negotiation with the tax office, and where that vehicle is genuinely used on company business, then the amount that is taxable will also be reduced. So I think that the government is after the, the genuine perk vehicle, the vehicle that isn't used for business, but is used as a genuine perk, and to me that seems fair. Yeah, what's happened to 
through to you. It hasn't got anything to do with Sunday. The boys are very keen to beat Belmont Swansea, which is a very good side. And uh, we fancy our chances very well. Now, if people go out to the ground on Sunday for the match, can they expect to see a good display? Oh, I think so. I think Northern Soccer needs a shot in the arm. Both sides are very skillful, very young, uh, and very keen. And uh, I think it'll be a great spectacle for the supporters of uh, soccer in Newcastle. Police say this brown Commodore slid out of control on the wet highway while travelling north. It careered into the path of this white Falcon station wagon travelling south just before 10 o'clock. Killed in the accident was the backseat passenger of the Commodore, Philip Sunderland, 59, of Sydney. Sunderland was travelling with the driver, Bevan Grove, and his wife to a bold presentation in Newcastle. Both received minor injuries and were treated at Wild Hospital. The Falcon was driven by 47-year-old Trevor England of Caves Beach. Mr. England is the manager of Aero Pelican. He was unhurt, but his wife Rhonda is suffering suspected spinal injuries. Mr. England was treated at the scene by paramedics and then flown by rescue helicopter to Royal Newcastle Hospital, where she's now in a satisfactory condition. The state government's commitment to buy the 27 hectare area of land to expand the Glenrock Reserve ends a long battle over the future of the Bailey land. Planning and Environment You're Minister right. Bob Carr was joined by a number of local parliamentarians, residents uh -huh. groups and conservationists, many of whom had lobbied rigorously. Mr Carr said the decision followed a reordering of priorities under the Coastal Land Protection Fund and was an example of the government's drive to preserve areas of environmental importance. He said negotiations with the owner of the land would begin within the next few weeks and that the purchase should be completed by Christmas. Uh, on March we announced uh, our full intention to declare the state recreation areas and to bring the separate parcels of land together bit by bit and uh, this is a further commitment by us to the creation of a, a truly magnificent Green Rock State Recreation Area for the, the use of future generations in the Hunter Valley. The owner of the land, Ken Bailey, welcomed yesterday's announcement, but said the ball was still in the government's court, as no negotiations have yet taken place. Well, I'll take Mr Carter's word, and uh, I'm sure uh, he will follow through his arrangements. Although we've had no indication of price, uh, which seems a little strange at the moment, uh, we've uh, had no correspondence with the government in the way. Uh, public now as much about as we do at the moment. Set in London, stepping out is the story of a ladies' dance class as they prepare for a grand charity concert. With the cast of nine, the play boasts some of the country's talented performers, including Carol Ray, Colette Mann and Nancy Hayes. Directed by Richard Harris, the play has already had sell-out performances in Adelaide, Perth and Melbourne. And for Rowena, it's a welcome thanks oh, to no, return to the no, theatre. Everybody is important in this play. It's, it's not a vehicle for anyone. It's an ensemble piece. And each character has, has their own kind of importance that they bring to the play. With a list of successful television dramas behind her, the best known for her portrayal of Pat the Rat in Sunday somewhere in London. A it character which, although brought her a gold logie, has its disadvantages. Yeah, play. People sometimes say to me, it's difficult to get used to seeing you on stage playing that kind of role after watching you in Sunday Morning. But, um, I mean, that's the thing about being an actor, you've got to do something different. Stepping Out will arrive in Newcastle on October the 16th. Stepping Out is because the character is, is so completely different. Mm. What do you think the uh, future is heading for Australia?